the storyline going into the day was the big matchup between Brady and Rodgers. That game just wrapped up. Wasn't quite the theatrics that we expected, but it still came down to the wire. Richard, your thoughts on the Brady Rodgers matchup? I mean, it's a great matchup. I mean, between them, they threw two incompletions the entire first half. It looked like the game. It, they looked like the quarterbacks that we've all built them to be and who they all have been their entire career. But at the end of the game, second half, my boy A Rod, no touchdowns, one interception. Tom drives the ball down the field, scores a touchdown, and has a delay of game for the two point conversion at mm. home. No crowd noise. Ah, that's going to be a backbreaker. That's one they're going to hate. You know, that's one of the ones you'd love to have back because who knows if they can get it or not. But Leonard Fournette is tough to bring down and stop with two yards to go. I think they get that, but. You know, makes it a lot harder two point conversion. A Rod gets the win, so that's all that matters. He he threw an interception, but nobody's gonna remember. Everybody remember wins and losses, and A Rod got this one. Richard, it was a low scoring affair. Um, I mean, fourteen to twelve. Definitely did not expect it to be that low scoring. I know Vegas didn't expect it to be that low scoring. I bet they didn't. <laughs> well, would you attribute that to to bad offense or good defense or a combo of both? A combo of votes. First off, A Rod, you know, is is still battling his way through with these young guys and still trying to make it through. They made some plays for him today. He made some plays. He simplified the offense. He got it to his playmakers early, moving the defense, backside slant, finding those guys in very, you know, creative ways. Um, but Tom, on the other hand, is out there with whoever they could find. You know, he's down three of his top three receivers. Um, you know, Russell Gage is still out there. He got thirty million dollars, so He's still out there, and he made a, he had a heck of a game. But there was a lot of drops, a lot of fumbles, crucial situations. You know, Tom played played a pretty good game, a really good game, and those those fumbles were were game changing plays. Keyshawn Nixon made a heck of a play for the uh, Green Bay Packers. Came in there for Jair Alexander, made a huge play, game changing play, punched the ball out, and that's what the Packers needed. They needed those turnovers. So I give credit to the defense. You know. Um, Tom had a good game, but he got down the field when it counted. But you got to you got to find those two points. How in the world can a three hundred and fifty pound nose tackle in Vita Vea play in space in coverage, break up that pass on uh, Aaron Jones? I mean, there's some monsters on the defensive side of the ball for the Bucks. I know that you know all of them very very well. Does this loss change the way you view them as a top tier team in the NFC? Um, no, no. I mean, it doesn't really change the way I view them. Um, it may change the seating down the line if they're a not able to 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 make a run. The health of their receiving core is at the crust of this, so it's not. And and Tom still had a chance to win at the end of the game. So you know, without two of the, I mean, three of the top receivers at his disposal, he still was able to go out there and give himself a chance to win. And you got to give Tampa Bay defense credit for being able to hold a Rod down to fourteen points the entire game. With that being said. Those receivers got to be healthy. You know, Mike has to come back. Godwin has to come back. Julio Jones, t- partially torn PCL. We're just hearing about that. Ah, you 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 don't want to hear that. You know, obviously, when they need to be healthy is December. But I mean, we're we're three games in, and and they're having they've all dropped. The best ability is availability, and right now they do not have that. Richard, going into this weekend, uh, the Vegas odd line for broken tablets in this game was over over under one and a half. Um, I didn't see Brady throwing any on the sideline, but I did hear there was a league-wide memo sent out to stop breaking tablets. Is this the weirdest thing you've heard in a while, or is that just par for the course with the NFL? That's par for the course, but I don't think that's something Tom is t- thinking about in the game. If he got pissed off and wanted to break a tablet, he's going to break a tablet. But <laughs> I think he just wanted to show – um, more confidence, more poise, more leadership, and that matters, you know. Especially when you got a bunch of young receivers out there, they see you throwing a fit and and, and pissed off, and you know it kind of push puts their head to the ground. And instead, he was out there trying to encourage his guys, you know, looking them in the eye, like, "Hey, I know you made a mistake, but you got this." And I think that meant a lot more to those guys than watching him break a tablet. You know, it's for with veteran receivers, you can do that. You, they know, "Hey, I got to play better. I got to do better. I got to make those plays." But with young guys, that could crush them. And he understood that and, and and changed it this week. Now, Richard, moving on, uh, we saw a big upset in Indy today. Um, Man, a big, colossal. Uh, colossal upset in Indy. Did you see this coming? Are you surprised at all? 
Now, I'm going to let you know something. There ain't, if somebody said they saw this coming and they're outside of Indianapolis, they're lying. Even inside <laughs> of Indianapolis, they're, they're lying. That was a great game, and it was a great game plan. Using Gilmore um, on Travis Kelsey, a lot of those plays, and finding him ways to – Gus Bradley – finding ways to get him involved. He's still a top-tier corner. You just got to put him in matchups. He's so used to -to man-to-man. They've used him on Travis Kelsey in critical situations. He was able to make those plays. And there was you you saw there was was some confusion. You know, I don't want to say there was a a disagreement, but Mahomes at the half wanted to go for points. The enemy wanted to get to the locker room. Hey, I hear you. But you got to – they always told me you got to listen to the coordinator, and you're not the coach. And so – I'm sure they'll have a discussion. I'm sure next time the enemy will give him the ball and let him let him go for it. But in that situation, it's not like they were scoring a ton of points. They avoid the turnover, unnecessary turnover or something like that before the half. Cool. But later on in the game, it came back to bite them. They needed a field goal. They couldn't get it. Their special teams let them down. Fake field goal, botched it. Come on, Mitch. You can't have those plays. Like, uh... And those are desperation plays for, for a team that's so creative offensively, so – amazing and so innovative sometimes you just a team has your number for the day, night and that's what it looked like i mean it was a pedestrian game for them rich they did not look themselves at all every time you, you thought hey they're gonna score here they're gonna get it done here and then making mistakes and mental mistakes chris jones getting flagged for saying god knows what at the end of the game but those are mistakes that championship teams do not make those are mistakes that teams that are allergic to winning make and uh, you know rich that's not something we've become accustomed to seeing with the chiefs so i mean it's the opposite of what we saw last week from their game against the chargers when they needed big plays they got them when they the other team made mistakes they capitalized on them and it was the opposite this week i mean chris jones doesn't make that mistake very often and you know he has a track record of being very poised and, and very to the point and i don't know what he said but I'm sure he regrets saying it now because it cost his team. You know, his team was off the field. That's a game changing play. The Colts will go down and score. Now, Richard, both teams coming off big losses. Bucks and the Chiefs play each other next Sunday on Sunday Night Football. I mean, talk about another great game. But this is a get back game for both guys. Who do you think will have the upper hand going into Sunday night? It really depends on the health of those receivers that we've been talking about. Hey, those receivers got to get healthy. If they're not healthy, then it, the, the, it obviously goes to the Chiefs. The Chiefs are are better equipped to beat the the Bucks than even the Packers were. You know, the Packers got A-Rod, but, you know, their weapons aren't as, as crazy as the Chiefs. They don't have Travis Kelsey. They don't have proven all pro on the offensive side. They don't, you know, they got A-Rod, and A-Rod can make anything shake. But I think with Andy Reid play calling, I think it, they would have that advantage unless Mike Evans is healthy and Chris Godwin is healthy and Julio Jones, and I'd give it to the Bucks. Let's go all the way out to the NFC West. Rams, Cardinals. The Cardinals might be the worst team in the NFL right now, Rich. Just from a common layperson watching them play football, they're not fun to watch. And I'll guess what? And away. guess what? And guess that, that's hard to say because there's only one on three team in the National Football like right league right now, and they're in your old home, Las Vegas, and that's Yo, tough because they invested a lot. A lot of people looking at Josh McDaniel was like, "Now wait a minute." <laughs> This Belichick tree looking like it always has. Unfortunately, it looks good in New England. You put it somewhere else, it does not look the same. Devontae Adams is still Devontae Adams getting open, making plays, but for some reason, Derek Carr isn't spreading the ball like he used to. The concepts that you're used to seeing getting wide open, creative looks aren't what they used to be. Defensively, they're not stopping a soul, so I don't know what they're doing defensively and, and schematically. A lot of things to clean up. I need to look at the all 22, but Kyler, that's his one win. And so he threw for, Kyler threw for what, 314 today? Like he's getting his yardage, but it's a lot of times it's garbage yards. They're down yeah. multiple touchdowns, double digits, and he's he's getting the ball down the field, but score points. All right. Those stats mean nothing to me, Rich, because it's it reminded me like, Being a Lions fan and always them being behind, Matthew Stafford had, you know, these killer 300, 350, 400-yard games where the Lions just inevitably would lose. They're down, you know, multiple scores. You're seeing that same kind of thing with the Cardinals. Cardinals got out to an incredibly hot start last year where where that team in the league, that hot team, and then all of a sudden Call of Duty came out and Kyler Murray was no longer to be seen anywhere. And it's like the same regression that we saw at the tail end of last year, has continued into this year. You know, I mean, the offense is is not dynamic. The defense is trying to keep them in games, but it's just 
they're hard to watch, Rich. Correct it, it, me if I'm wrong. You're, uh, you're, you're not wrong, and I'm sure people are questioning. Cliff Kingsbury just got an extension, so he has nothing to worry about. He's not going to be in anybody's hot seat. And, and it's concerning because the second half of the season for the last two, three years, have they've been under 500 for the second half of the season. And that's concerning because they're not starting the season as hot as they usually did. I mean, that one year they started off 8-0 and then barely snuck into the playoffs. And then, you know, we're one, or what, one round and out. And that's where you're concerned because if they're struggling this early in the season, they're not going to get better. I mean, they're still waiting for J.J. Watt to come back. Uh, it's going to be interesting down the stretch because that NFC West is, you know, if, if San Francisco wins tonight and the Rams just won, then it starts to kind of get away from you quick. <laughs> 